Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So today I thought we'd do a really like a five minute challenge, right? Type of video. If you just got supplies and you're like, what do I paint? Or if you've been doing it for a while and you're like, I don't know what to paint. <laughs> or you just like kind of in a rut. I think doing five minute challenges are kind of fun and they really help you like get loose and just don't think so much. When you think so much, it kind of becomes like a problem. Now, it, this particular painting might take maybe a touch more than five minutes because I was going slowly to show you. But once you draw the item and then fill it in, um, it will literally will take you five minutes because it's wet on wet and just blending color. And we're going to be painting five minute hummingbirds. Let's see if it, there we go, hummingbirds. Literally this guy took me five minutes. Ooh, there we go. And this guy too. So I'm going to show you how to draw them. And then the flowers are just these doodad, loose flowers. Not much effort. Really not much effort at all. So if you have the questions, leave them in the comment section. Some of you might say, oh, you're crazy. This didn't take me five minutes. It can take you five minutes once you draw the bird. So maybe the bird might take you a little bit longer. But once you paint it, it takes you five minutes. Okay? <laughs> I'm telling you, it will. Um, so there you go. If you have any questions, like I said, leave them in the comment section. But without further ado, let's get painting the birds. Uh... All right, to begin with, let's go start how to draw this hummingbird. I know some people say, oh, this is too hard. It isn't. You can do it. Okay, the shape. Just a curve. Think your hand going like this. Curve, curve, curve. Like an S. You know, S's go like this or this, right? But you're gonna do a backwards S, but kind of elongated. So start with the backwards S. That's kind of the body, the head. This is the pointy beak, right? And then from here, you go up and down and kind of have the tail kind of come down like this. Now this is looking a little bit bumpy and you put the eye in here. I would kind of shave this down a little bit. And then you're just gonna do the wings like this because the way we're gonna paint this is pretty kind of loose and simple, right? So let me go over this again. Take the body, kind of just curve it, go like this, right? And this is your beak. And come back up and curve down, and you go like a little tail. And then here's the wings. Now, we're not gonna do real technical with this hummingbird because we're making it kind of like a fun, simple, fast kind of exercise, right? And then, of course, you'd have to go backwards the other way. So if you wanted to do it this way on this side, for the second bird, kind of the same thing. You kind of go, here's the beak, up, over, and down, kind of like that, see? And then you go like this for the wings, and then I'll paint the wings really loose. If it helps to paint, I mean, excuse me, it helps to draw in more of a, um, circles and oblong shapes but here's a circle do another circle like a blonde shape here and then you can kind of point the point here and then curve see how this works curve and then meet them then you erase all this and you have the eye and then you have the wings right so let me show you with the pencil see what i'm saying or like a small pen so here you have zoom in a circle and then do an oval leaning on its side you see that and then you put the pointy point out here and you kind of meet here and come down and put the little tail and then you can go in and you can erase this part now it might not be as curved as mine but you can kind of get the gist of it right That's what I'm saying. It's really quick and easy. And then just put these two little lines out here. We're going to paint these really simple wings. And then for flowers, just kind of do the flowers that you are that you paint the best, right? Because we're going to be doing wet on wet and bleeding. So I'm using Arches 100% cotton cold pressed paper pad here, just a piece of paper. I'm going to just I kind of penciled in where I'm going to have my birds, but I'll go back in and I'll draw them again. So here's the beak, curve down. Here's the tail, here's the head, kind of curved down again, and here's the tail. And then the wings will kind of be here. And then the eye, simple little eye. And then I had another one up here. 
This is the beak. Really simple. Because we're going to paint this simply. It's not going to be something that's really hard. Okay. I might fix that uh, wing here. I don't think I want that wing like I uh, Just giving myself like where I want the wing. Maybe I'll have like a wing here and then here kind of coming up. A little different than this one. So there you have the two birds. All right, you can see them kind of faintly from the pencil. So why would I want to use our cotton paper? Because it's the best for wet on wet and this simple fun. I'm embracing the lines that I really don't want to see too many, too much of this line. I'm not going to draw in my flowers. Now I have a hummingbird um, tutorial from a while ago. It's kind of similar technique, maybe a little bit different. And I don't like the wings how I have them like that. I'm going to fix them so they're a little closer together. Let's see how they are. I'll raise this. And now like this and this. Looks more makes more sense. So this is when you play with the fun color. <laughs> um, I have a lot of fun colors going on here. I have my opera, Catman Red Light. I have Quidacodon Magenta. I've got my yellow. You're going to be playing around with purples and yellows and greens. Um, use metallic paint if you have some metallic paint. Go crazy. Here's this opera color. Um, it's over there. This color is intense. It's like a neon color, which is perfect. Okay, uh, this is ultramarine deep blue. We're not going to get into too many browns or anything like that. I want the bird to be fun, colorful, energetic, all that good stuff. I'll be using, um, playing around with my Princeton 12 Aqua Elite Series brush and my Princeton 8 Long Round if I need to get more like fine lines going in here because it has a great point. So I'm just going to spray bottle, activate some of my dried paints over here. Wait, wait, wait. Got a lot of fun things going here. To make some bright colors in the beginning to have them ready to go. Because we're going to bleed paint on paint. So the, the two birds can be totally different colors. You can have more of the blue purple ones. I'm taking some peacock blue. Peacock blue is like turquoise if you don't have peacock blue. And I'm adding some yellow to it. It's a bright bright green All right activating this lovely ultramarine blue if I put some over here I can mix a nice purple I'll grab the opera or magenta whatever color I have look at that pretty purple and I'll grab the opera I think you should make your hummingbirds any colors you want that are kind of fun um, I have metallic fun paints that are you know, over in these palette pads. These were part of a promotion I did a long time ago from Prestigify, but I have links in my shop, my supplies, in my description box of other ones you can buy because I couldn't find these. And, um, look at these uh, bright pinks and these are metallics. Greens, it's a perfect for um, leading these into also. I might activate some of these and see how this goes. So I'll just spray bottle with some of these colors. And that's how I activate my paints, by the way. Take a spray bottle, like a cheap little spray bottle you get at like any craft store. And just spray your paint. Because what's great about watercolor and water-based gouache, not acrylic gouache, you can reactivate it with water. It's the best, right? So this guy should not take you 10, 15, 20 minutes. Literally, this bird should take you five minutes. That's why I'm saying it's a five minute hummingbird, right? As long as you get your colors ready ahead of time. So I'll have my colors ready. I'll have my my turquoise ready. See? Activated my peacock blue. The blues, the purples, the pinks, even the yellows. All this stuff needs to be just loosened up. Because we're going to blend wet on wet. So now you have your shape, right, and your wings. We'll start off with the body of the bird. We're just going to get it wet with the brush get it all nice and wet I'm gonna leave the the eye not wet I'm gonna go around the eye I'm just gonna paint this real quickly wait wait hit the whole body and now all you're gonna do is bleed color right so I might take my light green just tap it up on top 
just like this. This is really not going to take me much time and I'll grab that turquoise color, kind of blend it in here. If you want to use a small brush, go ahead. I'm going to use more of the turquoise. I can grab some of that pink. Ooh, blend it in. That That's the opera. Maybe a little red kind of thrown in there too. All right? Grabbing some of my purple. Uh, you see I'm just throwing everything in the kitchen sink. <laughs> um, the ultramarine blue a little bit down in here. That's what I like about the hummingbirds. Let's, let's just make them any colors you want, right? Um, I'm gonna get some more green going here. Maybe a little more green down in the back. It's like a rainbow. Now you can add more turquoise. It could be more of a turquoise tint to it. I'm gonna go back in and grab some turquoise and it mixed into my green. So I just want a couple, a little bit of that purple. I'm gonna go back in with the turquoise and make this more of a Turk kind of bird. Well, look how pretty it looks already. And just gonna tap this down a little bit, grab my turquoise or maybe some, I might even grab some brown here just to just ground the tail a little bit. Even some dark ultramarine blue. But really, how many minutes has this been so far? Two, three? Seriously, not that much. Maybe grab some more pink if you want to. Put some of that in here coming down. This is my hummingbird. He's gonna have many colors. <laughs> you know, you can look at so many pictures and you can go crazy. And you know, get technical if you want to, if you wanna have exactly how the colors look for a hummingbird. But I think just to play with the color, you kind of know it's a hummingbird because they're so colorful. Um, maybe I'll add a little brown in here just to make ground, just to make it look a normal type bird. Lift up some of that color. Seriously though, it's not taking much time, right? Now I'm gonna go back in with some purple. So ultramarine blue and some opera. I don't want it super wet. I'm trying to use less paint, less water, excuse me. Get a little darker with my purple kind of going in here towards the beak, right? And same thing with my green, less water, a little more color, just getting up in here, bleeding that color in there, All right? Well, this got a little muddy. You can lift some of the paint up, by the way. Lift, tap, lift, tap. Still haven't hit five minutes yet, right? And if I didn't like this, the red, I might go back in and add some of that beautiful pink up in here. Voila. Okay, now we're gonna take the number eight brush to get that beak going across. And you can add some darker colors like paints gray and ultramarine blue or there's like really deep tones, like almost black. I'm just gonna move in the paint, as you see here, across. And you can make it super pointy if you want. Boom. Look, it's a hummingbird. Grab some of those dark colors too. Kind of put the tail down a little bit here. Little feathers going down the way, I see. And if you want to add a couple little dark tones kind of going around the eye this way. I'm going to go back and add some bright green. Oop, my colors got a little muddy. So I'll take the peacock blue and the yellow. Make that pretty chartreuse green. And gonna go around that eye. Voila. All right, for the wings, simple, simple, simple. How long did that bird take us? I think that's five minutes for that. Well, seriously, I was going a little bit slow, but we're gonna go a little faster. So for the wings, I might get a darker color, like a brownish blue color. I don't know if I want it necessarily bright, bright. So you go out like this. Make it a little more brown. And out like this. Right? With the Princeton 8 long round. You can use the same brush. Grab some blues or purples. Kind of hold it on its side. Kind of blend it to that line that you did. Blues, purples. I'm going to grab a little purple in here. Boop. See, so I'm holding it on its side. Now I'm going to clean up my brush. Just to put a little color in there, grab some water, 
kind of blend that together. Clean up my brush again. So I'm just kind of blending that. Clean up my brush, blending it so it's kind of wisping out. See that? Now we'll have to wait till this dries and we can put in some nice little fine lines. But really this whole part took nothing to do. Nothing. If you want to take some time and take some paint and kind of play around with moving the color. What do I mean by moving the color? Just kind of loosening it up, moving the color outward. I just grab some water and kind of like making the scene like action, right? So I'm grabbing water, kind of moving the paint out here. Maybe grab a little color like yellow or purple. It's up to you. You can just lift the bird the way it was. It's just playing with the paint. You know, you can add some splattered color too. I might grab some like like green, splatter that a little bit. See what happens. We want it to be loose and fun. Now I don't know if I like this part. I might just just erase it a little bit. Just gonna. I just want to give it some action. So I'm kind of just going like this with the paintbrush, and then moving some color around, yellow and some pretty purple and blues. All those fun things. See? Action. Action bird. Action. <laughs> there. All right, so when this dries, we will go back in and we'll add in some of the fine lines with darker tones like purples or blues, even browns, and make those little lines for the feathers. But right now it's still just very damp and you don't want to do that. So that really took five minutes. I might go back in and add a little bit of turquoise on this wing and on the body. Just want it colorful. It's up to you. It's all preference. All right, so we finished that one bird. Now we do the same thing with this guy. You can still just use this number eight the whole time, by the way. So you can go and get this one wet, except this little eye. I think I didn't draw in his little eye, but I'll just... And let me tell you, if you made a mistake by not going around the eye and you went around the eye, you can just go back in and it's basically going to be black. You can put black with a white gouache dot. I'm going to play around with some of the metallic paint in this one. There's some kind of do that here. So I had some of these bright metallic paints. Let's see how these work out with these neon greens. All right, so on the second bird, I did the same thing with this one. And I'm just going in and adding in some color. And I'm going to go use some of my metallic colors. Just be, you know, play around with them. I don't know if I like them as much as I like my regular Hobine. They don't really shine like metallic, so I'm not even gonna bother with them. I'm gonna go back in with my other colors that I was doing before. Turquoise up here on the top part. It's got little green, so I'm gonna go back and add more peacock, bright blue, which is like a turquoise color. It can be purple up there too. Playing around with that. Green. I could add some ultramarine blue. Around. Then kind of blend it into purple. This one would be a little bit different. Try and make this one like purples and blues with a hint of bright. It's this opera color. Where is it? It's bright pink. Just kind of blending that. Cleaning off my brush, grabbing some water. And so the water's got a tint to it. It's got a little pink purple tint to it, but that's okay. I'm moving this paint up in here. So this one's going to look a little different. Maybe like bright pinky yellow. I'd stay away from the, the yellow in the front with the purple because it would turn brown. This was a purple tint in here. So it's getting a little brownish, but that's okay. And then we've got turquoise back in here again. See, you can just play around. It's like a rainbow bird. I don't necessarily think it has to be like a perfect looking bird. I'll add some pans gray and some 
ultramarine blue and get that little point again. Kind of going on here. Can get in. Blend, blend, blend the color. But really, you're just blending in the color. I want them to be colorful, like rainbows. And then for the wings, again, I would go back and maybe use some brown. This is burnt ember. And some gray, a little color red. So I'm gonna clean that off. I'm gonna grab some purple. Just kind of wisp it in here. See, really loose. Attaching it to that line that I did. Grab some pink, purple. Clean off my brush, just grab water at this point. Clean off, grab water, I'm just kind of blending it. Clean off. What I do is I clean off, I tap it on the paper towel a little bit, and then I blend it out. See, and then clean it off, tap it, and you're blending out the wing. You can add more colors, kind of floating out. It's up to you. Got some colors down in here, maybe some blues. I'm just playing with putting color around the birds. There. These really take really quick and easy. Boom. So when you get your colors done, I'm gonna go in that a little bit of touch of bright red in here, why not? And then some up over in this wing. Like play around with the colors. It doesn't have to be a specific type of color. You know, you can get creative. Just kind of lift. You know how you lift paint? Is you're kind of mopping it up. Lift, mop. I wanted to make more purple tone kind of happening up there. It's going to mix with the green, so it might not be as pretty, but I'm just going to play around with it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, this part is fairly dry. Remember I talked about going back with that? That's the lines. So you can take some paints gray, not to bring blue, even some brown, and you're just going to put these little lines to, to, to indicate the wings, right? Little lines coming out here. You don't have to do the wing part like this everywhere. The little lines kind of swooping through once it's dry. It lost some of the body here. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna go back in and add some quick little lines. See that? To fill it in. And the little tail down here. Take some like darker tone of the blue that you had, the turquoise. Just make some little lines for that. See? And you can blend it again once it's dry. <laughs> oh fun so much color I'm going to add more turquoise down in here once it's dry cleaning off my brush grabbing some water so that's all you do you just grab the darker tones whatever color you want blues, browns just put the little detailed lines and then for the eye so you take your black tone I have paints gray and you fill it in and just leave a little I'm going to leave a little white dot. If you forget to do that, you can just grab some white gouache. See? I leave a little white around the eye too. And I notice I have a little dot there. I just go like that. and I have to wait for this one to dry to do that one, but look at that. Cute little bird. And for flowers, do whatever you want, you know? Um, I'll start off making some green stems. So Mixing up some green color, color tones. I'm going to mix up some greens here. Okay. So they could just be kind of floating. Just going like that. See little lines like that. Really simple, quick. If you want to put some leaves on them, number eight brush. Talk about making these compound strokes that make leaves. You just kind of push down and pull back and pull it, see? Push down and twist it, 
Push down and twist and pull back. Just simple leaves. Push down, twist. Mine was just kind of messy. And that's because these guys look kind of messy. Oop, that was a big drop. Same thing up here. Push down, twist, pull back. Push down, twist, pull back. And because the paper has a tooth to it, you get that dry brush effect. This is fun. <laughs> See? Doesn't that look cool? I just kind of whip. I could take some darker tones and kind of whip through those. Tippy tap. See, I'm just tippy tap. You guys love when I say tippy tap. But I'm tippy tap to dark tell the darker tone, just kind of bleeding wet on wet in there. Boom. So then that's a simple stem with some leaves. And then for a flower, you have to pick what colors you want. Pink, purple, whatever. I'm gonna use this opera. I don't know if you can see this upper color. It's over here. Maybe grab some of this cadmium red light, which is a really great color. It's kind of pricey and, you know, use it sparingly. So then I'm just going to do this movement kind of like this to make a flower. See? Just a loose, like a V. You guys could do that. If you want to get technical and really make a flower shape, you can do that. But the whole thing is just supposed to be a loose, simple painting, right? So that's that reddish pink. I might go back in and add some opera. I just don't want it to be something that's really difficult. The flowers shouldn't be so difficult. Just really kind of throwing in some color, right? I might grab a nice chartreuse looking green, mixing up some of that and throwing that color in around. Oops, I blended into my pink. That's okay, let's lift it up. So I like this color just to go in other places. Just bright green. See, I'm just kind of moving around the paper, giving that movement. And then I'll water it down a little bit. You can splatter some nice pinks. I just, this is for like a beginner to like not be intimidated by doing a little hummingbird, right? And just the flower doesn't have to be so perfect because we didn't make him perfect. If you want to go back in and make a perfect little flower, please feel free, you know, with the petals and the, and the stamen and all that stuff. Sometimes I feel like the loose free stuff is much more fun. So this one's still a little damp. We'll have to wait till this one dries. All right, so I dry that one. Remember, this one didn't take more than five minutes. I'm telling you. And you can go back in and do the eye. Same thing. If you didn't leave any white around, it's okay. You can always just take some white gouache. This paint is a little too wet. I added too much water on that one. Do the eye on this one. And again, the dark tones for the little wings. So I'm grabbing some ultramarine blue, going back in here. And I'll take the turquoise on the wing here again. Don't pay attention to making any noises. I just do some little lines, indicate the wings. Very energetic. See, I'm cleaning off my brush, dipping in the water, and just kind of blending that. Can add some ultramarine blue with some gray, bleed that too. And up in this part, maybe some brown with the pink. Indicate the wings. Just little lines. You don't have to go crazy. You know, if you wanted to get a little darker in here. Add a little paint gray or deeper color. It's up to you. Um, I'm going to add a little darker purple after it dries. I can go back in, play around with that. See? Put this solid line in there. I clean off my brush, grab some water, and kind of blend it. And take that purple and kind of move it into the wing here. And that's pretty much it for this guy. I don't want to overdo it. And I'll put some dark, just a couple of dark lines kind of up in here. 
just to give him some dimension. And then again, you can kind of like take your brush, put some water on it and blend it kind of down here. Add some color, purple, pink, whatever. See, I'm giving it movement. It's kind of like throwing on the side. Grab some purple. All that fun stuff. It could be pink, it could be blue. Here's some ultramarine blue. Here's some pe peacock blue. Just having fun. Don't have to do that. You can remove some of it if you don't like it. Just the energy of like the tail and the wings kind of going like that. And like I said, you can just take some really loose color, splatter it around. That adds a lot of energy also. Some nice bright pinks up in here. Ooh, I just love it. <laughs> okay, so then there's your, like, your quick five minute hummingbirds. You know, they didn't take that much time, energy and effort. But really pretty, you know, I like this one the most, actually, more than this one. You could take some metallic and go over it later. I didn't think that they were got great paints playing with metallics, you know. I didn't feel like that they were shiny enough. You could try it. I might add a little metallic green. See, hardly any water. It does look better. So do like some little dash lines up here. And it really now that looks good metallic so I might add some metallic up in here you can find all kinds of metallic paint online and I have some in my shop my supplies so I'm just doing a couple of dashes up in here where that's dark of that metallic green play around with it you know add some metallic purple I find that if you add just a teeny bit of water and then you go in then it has that shine to it. If you water it down, mm, it's not so great. So I hope this was fun. And please don't be intimidated. I showed you how to draw it. I showed you how to paint it. It really didn't take more than five, maybe six minutes, five, six minutes to, to paint this little guy. Once you draw it, once you get the drawing down, you're just putting in the water and you're washing in the color and you're blending it and you have these fun little hummingbirds. <laughs> <laughs> floating around the sky. I think I probably should connect the stems a little bit, but it makes sense, right? Because they're kind of floating stems. But that's that. You really, it shouldn't take you much effort. It should be just a lot of fun. And those flowers took two seconds to make. I'm trying to give you painting ideas for beginners who are just, they get intimidated. Some people get intimidated by stuff. And once you get good at it, then you can start to go in and get really detailed with the feathers and stuff like that. And or detailed flowers. Once you start to learn how to paint some more detailed flowers, I'm going to start to do some more advanced flowers on YouTube and things like that. But right now, just trying to help some people out who are looking for tutorials that they can kind of do when they just got some new supplies at Christmas and they want to play. So I hope this was great and helpful for you. Um, let me know. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And take care, guys. Thanks for being awesome subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you haven't hit that bell notification button, please do so so you know my tutorials are up. All right, guys. Take care and have a great day.